going on guys, it's Kyle Watts. So today we came out to this autocross event in Minnesota. Uh, it's at Dakota County Technical College track. Uh, we're just gonna try some panning techniques with photography with the Tamron 28 to 200. I kinda wanna just test out this lens to see how good it can be for doing like panning shots in that 5.6 aperture. Uh, see if this is gonna be a good enough of lens for me to bring with when I go to the Austin Grand Prix. Let's just check it out. Let's try to do some shots. Uh, there's some pretty cool cars here. There's a lot of like normal cars. A lot of like souped up cars and there's a couple race cars here as well so let's just get going and uh do some photography i didn't bring my gopro with me so i'm not going to actually do any like pov versions of this but and then make sure you stick around for the end of the video because we're going to go through and edit some of these photos and see what we can get okay so i didn't have my gopro or really any other camera with me so i didn't get any of the like footage of me doing the photos uh but i'm going to kind of go through and we're going to go look at some of these photos we're gonna show how I got them, some of the camera settings I used to get them, the focal ranges. Uh, we're gonna talk about this Tamron lens for a little bit. And then we're also gonna get in and just start editing these photos. Kind of show you what my tricks are and things that I've learned about how to edit these kind of panning photos. But anyways, to get started, this is the Tamron 28 to 200. Uh, this lens is, like, a, like I said, a 28 millimeter all the way to a 200 millimeter. It is not stabilized. So like doing these panning shots, you have to be a lot more steady than you would with like the Sony 70 to 200. It's a pretty budget lens. I think I can't remember exactly how expensive this one was. Probably like $800, something like that. I wanted to kind of test this lens to see how well it worked without stabilization on it. So with this Tamron lens, I was using the Sony a7S III for both video and photography. Uh, that camera is stabilized, but like I said before, not having the stabilized lens, there's gonna be some limitations with this. <clears throat> but this is a very sharp lens and it does have a 200 millimeter throw which is very good for doing like things like race cars and things that are long distance away. So one of the main tips that I'm gonna talk about on this video is that when you're doing these panning shots, what you wanna do is you wanna just get this thing out as far as you can, as long as it's not too cropped in. Uh, and then you wanna start following the car like long before it gets to you. So that way you have enough chance for the autofocus to kind of hit the car. Uh, and then you just slowly want to move. You want to keep that thing as centered as possible in your frame. The more practice you get, the better it's going to be. Now, when I practice this method, I actually like doing this in video first because that way you get like one long file and you can kind of go back and review it versus if you're using like burst mode on photo, you're going to have to go through like 30 photos just to see if your camera even locked focus and whatnot. So, so by the time you're comfortable with getting the car centered, uh, now is a good time to switch over to photography. What you're gonna wanna do is go into your drive mode settings and turn it to burst or continuous. Uh, and that way it allows you to take multiple pictures per second, depending on what camera you have. Uh, and then you just start just like video. You start with the car as far as you can down and you just get it to lock focus. And then you just start, hold that trigger down, following it really smooth. Try to be as smooth as possible. And uh, that movement of you moving the camera is gonna get you the motion blur in the background. Uh, and then you're gonna try to get one or two really good photos with the car perfectly in, in focus. Uh, now this is something that is very difficult because some cars move so fast that it's really hard for it to lock focus. And you're gonna end up with plenty of photos that are just blurry and uh, everything's out of focus. That's just gonna happen. But that's why taking a burst mode, you're gonna get a ch you know, a chance that maybe one out of your 30 shots are gonna be perfectly in focus. Now, as far as your shutter speed's concerned, uh, the lower the shutter speed, the more motion blur you're gonna get. This is something you're just gonna wanna test until you kind of get it right. I started the day with like one fourth of a shutter speed and found out pretty quickly that for me, that was way too blurry. I couldn't get anything to lock focus. So then I just kept moving up until I started getting photos that did look like they're in focus. And I think I was actually at about like one over 40 before I was getting shots that were like crisp. Uh, and as long as you're moving with the car, you're gonna get that motion blur in the background, making that car look just like it's flying and it's going fast. That's the whole point of panning photography. So do keep in mind when you lower your shutter speed, you are gonna wanna raise your aperture or your iris. Um, you wanna bring that thing up as high as you need to to get it to be in a correct exposure. I think for most of the day, I was shooting in like F10 or F12 uh, with the lower shutter speed. That way I was able to get the correct exposure and not have everything be overexposed while I was going to a slower shutter speed. Okay, before we start getting into the editing in these photos, I'd just like to say a special thanks to Cuts Clothing for sponsoring this video. If you guys don't know by now, uh, this is literally the only thing I wear. You've seen it in probably every one of my videos. I've been literally recommending this brand now for about a year. It's the only shirt I've been wearing for about a year. Um, I love these things because I can go out on these hot days like this with backpacks on 
and I'm not getting those like wrinkly marks and sweat marks from wearing a backpack all day long, which is literally something that I was never able to do before with like regular shirts. You take the backpack off, you'd have sweat marks, your shirts would be all wrinkled. Uh, these shirts are great. They're comfortable. They, they have a cool style. They have the curved hem, split hem. They have a whole bunch of different styles, but I just mostly like how I can go outside all day long and not worry about having my shirt look like crap when I take my backpack off. And also, same thing when you go on traveling and trips, you can throw them in your backpack, get to where you're going, throw them on a hanger, they won't be wrinkled. And it's not just shirts that they make. Uh, Cuts Clothing has a huge line of like sweatshirts and swim trunks and shorts and joggers and you name it. Just go check it out and you'll see a whole bunch of things. Uh, but anyways, guys, I would not recommend this brand if I didn't believe in it. Hopefully you guys go check it out. If you do, there's a link in the description. Uh, and if you use that link, it'll save you 15% off your entire order. Or you can use promo code Kyle Watts. But anyways, guys, go check them out. And uh, thank you, Cuts Clothing. So anyways, let's pull up Lightroom here and see what we got. Uh, this first shot here is, I think, one of my favorite shots. Uh, this is kind of uncropped. So this is the 3 by 2 This is the SunTrust race car. Uh, as you can see, the background's fairly blurry. It's moving. It's got some motion to it. Car looks like it's just, like, racing like crazy. Uh, you can see the light post here definitely has, like, some blur to it. So let's see what it looks like on the unedited. So as you can see here, the unedited photo is just kind of, uh, it's very similar. It's the, the colors are a little different, the sharpness. And I'll go through a little bit here and show you how I kind of get these photos to pop a little bit and uh, stand out. So like I said before, when I first started shooting these photos, I started in a, like a one over four shutter speed. This is what it looked like when I first started shooting that, that uh, shutter speed. Clearly everything is blurry. Everything's got motion blur. I could just not capture that car well. Uh, and just kind of going down the line here, you'll see... I was starting to get a little bit better. Like that background is getting super blurry. Um, but I could just never quite get focus on the car. It wouldn't quite lock the way I wanted to. So then I started kind of upping my shutter speed to like 150th, like this shot. Uh, and now you're starting to actually get some good focus on the car. Background still some blurry. When you first start shooting panic photography, you're going to take a lot of shots. Uh, so get ready to have like a big memory card because you're going to need it. Uh, but throughout the day, you're going to start getting better. Uh, let's fast forward here. So the shot of shooting a more of about a 1 over 30. You can see the background is like super blurry. I'm starting to get better focus. As you kind of click through each slide, you'll see that it gets a little better. Some are a little bit more out of focus. Uh, and then basically those are just trash. Just throw those things away. But then I did land on one here with this Miata that I thought was uh, very sharp. Uh, it landed perfect focus with the car. Very blurry background. Uh, let's see what this unedited looks like. So same thing here. Uh, the saturation is just down. I'll show you how to make this pop later. But the car got pretty well in focus, and I think it's a cool shot. It looks like the car is racing like hell, and it's you know it's a little Mazda Miata, so it really wasn't going too fast. But uh, so this is kind of what panning photography is. You just follow the car best you can, forcing that blur in the background. You can see on this camera that uh, that was getting plenty of blur. A lot of it's trees, so it's kind of hard to tell versus like if you have something like a track with red and white stripes, you're going to see that a little bit better. So here in this shot, I actually put my camera in like a crop mode. So it was running about 350 mils out of that lens because uh, this part, this car was way further away from me. Uh, yes, it does crop in on the sensor. So now this 12 megapixel sensor gets worse. But anyways, the thing does a pretty good job of uh, hitting that car in focus, having a little bit of motion blur in the background, maybe not as much as I'd want. But throughout the day, I just started getting better. You, you start hitting these shots a little bit better. Sometimes you're not quite as in focus as you'd want until you get to the part where you're, you know, you're hitting bangers like this and everything's crisp, background's blurry, and everything starts to look good. So same with this shot, like the car was in super focus, background's starting to blur. But yeah, you're going to go through, and uh, when you go to edit these panning photos, by the way, you're going to have like 3,000 photos probably, maybe more, because you're just, you're taking bursts of lots of photos. So... Get ready when you're doing these kind of photography that you're going to be spending a lot of time editing and going through finding the right photos first. So, all right, so let's take this original photo here and let's just kind of go through my method to how I edit these photos. I have a couple different tricks that I can show you that I like. Uh, but basically, when you first bring this up though, I think the first thing I start doing is just kind of correcting some of the basic adjustments, um, bring down highlight shadows, exposure. Usually I'll bring up my shadows a ways because that'll bring up a lot of the motion in these trees in the background. Um, bring up the whites just to kind of brighten the photo. I typically will put in just like a very small like S-curve. I'll lift the blacks a little bit, give it a little bit of contrast, and I'll come back to that later. 
So this photo, I definitely want to warm up a little bit. It's a little bit on the cooler side. So I would bring it up a little bit with the warmth. Don't go too crazy because when you're, you have grass and stuff, if you go too crazy, it's going to look really bad. Um, if you want, you can take your little eyedropper and uh, find something that's pure white and try to white balance it. So right there, it's that's the correct white balance. It looks a little orange still, but um, then I'll bring up my, my vibrant sometimes or my saturation. On this one, we're going to bring up the saturation a little bit. Then we're going to quick go into the HSL slider here, and I think I'm going to adjust these oranges and the yellows, just make those things pop as much as possible. We want this car to be very separate from the background. Um, I like the tone, so I'm not going to really mess with the hues. I think we're just going to bring up those golds. Keep in mind when you're in the yellow and the orange section, you will be moving the grass colors, so be kind of careful what you're doing. Uh, let's bring up the car's blue. Um, so we're going to saturate that a little bit. I'm going to bring the hue a little bit down, and we're going to bring up the luminance of that blue, because I want that blue to be brighter. Uh, and then I'll show you another quick trick to bring out the car a little bit more. We'll get back to that in a sec. Uh, clarity, I'm going to bring it up a tiny bit, maybe not a lot, just because if you bring it up too much, you're going to get a lot of weird detail in the background, and we don't want that. So I want a little bit in the car, uh, not much. And what I'm going to do to compensate for that is we're going to go to our sharpening, and we're going to take the mask and hold down Option. We're going to bring that mask up until it's literally pretty much just the car with a little bit of those like kind of blur, speed racer kind of looks. We're gonna bring that thing way up there and then I'm gonna sharpen the heck out of it from there. Uh, don't go too crazy, but as you can see, that extra sharpening there, I think it just made that car pop a little bit more. Let's see, we have lens corrections on. So now that I have this thing set like this, let's go back now and uh, this is where I kind of will go back and fine tune my exposure and shadows and stuff. I want this to be a little brighter. So we'll bring that up a tiny bit. Contrast, I want that to pop a little bit better. So bring the contrast up. Highlights, I'm going to bring down a little bit. You kind of just play with that until it looks right. The whites look good. So, so here's my trick now. Um, what I like to do is I go to the masking now. This is a new feature that Lightroom has that I really use a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to start with Select Subject. And this is why I do this after the sharpening effect. So that way it'll really like focus on that sharpening. So we're going to go select subject. Now it literally selected just the car. Uh, if you look in the background, there's just a tiny bit of the, the road that it got. I'm not worried about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring up the exposure a little bit in the car. Not much. Maybe bring that contrast up a tiny bit more. Highlights down a touch. Bring up that whites maybe a little bit. And bring down those blacks. Uh, and this is where if you want to make the temperature different on the car, you can. Um, I'm going to actually bring it back down a little bit into the cooler side to make those whites stand out a little bit more since we warmed up the whole picture earlier. And then when we get to saturation, I'm going to saturate that all, quite a bit because we want that blue and that orange and that red to really pop against that green background. So now you think like the car is separated from the background. There's another cool trick you can do if you do another create mask and then once again hit select subject. It's going to remask the subject, but instead we're going to go up here and hit the invert button. Now it just inverted the entire background and left the car. So this is kind of what I do now to separate the car from the background. We can just play around with some of the settings. Like I'm going to lower the exposure a little bit to make that car stand out more. The contrast, I think I'm going to lower the contrast of the background. We're going to take some of the, actually we're going to add a little bit of the highlights into the background because I want that motion blur in the highlights to like stand out. We're gonna bring up the shadows a touch. And um, if you need to warm it up here, it's a good, you can do that here as well. I think it's fine where we're at. I'm gonna desaturate it just a tiny bit, not a lot, cause I don't wanna like make it look totally fake, but. So this is a cool thing. Once you have the background set, if you wanna make this background a little bit more blurry, we can actually go into this like texture dial and actually lower it. But as you can see, if I go way too far, it's kind of taking that motion blur effect out of it by blurring it too much. And same thing if you go too high, it'll be, it's too crazy. So kind of just adjust your photos until it looks good. I'm actually going to bring just a tiny bit of the clarity out and I'm probably going to actually, we're going to leave dehaze where it is. Uh, so that's just a kind of cool setting to separate your background from your, your foreground. 
So we're gonna hit enter, get that back. So now this is another cool little trick if you wanna kind of finalize your photos. Um, let's, let's first let's crop this photo. Let's get into like a, let's get this into three by two, but let's just make this, let's get rid of this pole a little bit. I don't like that pole so much. So um, let's bring this up. I'm just gonna kind of center the car. Keep a little bit of the background because you want to keep the background in these shots because you want to keep that motion blur. So now we have the car completely separated from the background. It's cropped down. Let's go back to the masking again and we're going to go to create mask and we're going to do a linear gradient. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start from the back and pull this out. And you can kind of screw with the angles with it. I'm going to kind of go at an angle a little bit. We're going to drop the exposure a tiny bit and drop the contrast a little bit, actually up the contrast. We're trying to do it, we're giving it an effect where behind the car is shadowing because it's moving so fast is kind of the idea. And then what I'm gonna do is do another create mask. You can either do a linear or a radial. We're gonna do the exact opposite. We're gonna pull that down and we're gonna give this a little bit extra exposure and we're going to give it a little extra highlights and I'm actually going to warm it up to give it that kind of sun effect. So now we have this effect. I'm going to back this off a little bit where the sun is kind of coming in in front of the car and the shadows behind the car. It just gives it that extra little like movement motion. It kind of fakes the photo a bit to really show that this car is just hauling ass. So uh, you can do the same thing with like a radial gradient as well. If you want to do that, um, radial gradient will also be kind of like a sun as well. So if you want to bring this up here, you can back in the corner and you can change your exposure there. I just use the radial one because, um, or I just use the linear because I like the look of that one as well. So we're going to just delete that one. But there, now you have kind of a good complete photo. I think it's it's it pops against the background. The car looks super sharp. The background looks blurry. It's got a lot of motion blur. Uh, that blue and that gold really pop outside of that green. And that's how you get like a really cool effect of the car just moving like crazy. And really this car was moving pretty fast, but it wasn't it wasn't going like Formula One speeds, anything like that. So the, the edit is trying to give the illusion that it's going faster and same thing with the motion blur panning photo. So, so back to the original and our finished product. And it didn't take too much to get there. It just took some kind of clever effects. Um, you could try doing different things with shadowing. But one thing you do want to pay attention to is if you're going to do this kind of sun and shadow effect, make sure that the sun isn't like on the opposite side and the shadows of your subject are going the other way. Because then that's kind of a dead giveaway that you're faking this look. Um, but that's how I do that shot. Uh, and from here you can recrop this or whatever kind of effect you want to do. You can put it into Photoshop, add any extra effects or clean things up if you need to, uh, take out the pole. Uh, some other effects that I've done in the past too are like you do like another, um, like let's just say a radial gradient, uh, invert it, put it over the subject and then even lower the exposure more. That way you'll get more of that honed in look. But then you're kind of getting rid of that sunlight shadow effect if that's what you want to do. All right, so if you have any questions on panning photography or on the Tamron 28 to 200, please leave me a comment down below. Uh, if this video has been a help and you like it, hit that like button if you can. Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along to other gear reviews, film tutorials, Lightroom tutorials. And as always, you guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.